how to create a design like this in Affinity Photo. Super easy, super quick, and you can make many variations of it as well. Select a shape, such as a rectangle, and drag. Now I'm gonna fill it with black. Once you've done that, what you can do is go to Filters, down to Colors, and to Procedural Texture. So Procedural Texture, bit of mass, but not very complicated mass, so click that. And in there, you find you've got presets at the top. It's a really useful preset, great start point for many, many different designs. Checkered, so we go to there, and in Checkered, you'll notice you've got this function at the top, this equation. And what you can do, you can modify it. It's not fixed in stone, so you can simply go up here. Instead of Rx, you can put Rx again, just type Rx on the keyboard, and then asterisk. And then you've got Rx times Rx times C. And then you can tap off and you can see the result of that. It doesn't look particularly promising at this point, but what you can also do is go here, Ry, and do the same. Star or asterisk, Ry again. And you can tap off that. It looks even less promising, but you'll notice what you can do. You can also modify this, W. W is the width, width of the document. So bracket and put 100 times and then bracket around that. Now it's changed it a bit. And you can do exactly the same with this one. This W here, put 100 times and then bracket around that. And now you got that which is a great start point for that design I just showed you right at the start. What you can also do, instead of using 100 there, which is great because you can always come back and tweak it and change it, but you can also set it as a parameter or custom input. Just go down there. So I'm just going to go with Z. You could go with R, perfectly reasonable, but I'm going with Z. So just click it. Just click there and you'll notice you get this custom input and it set it to A. Now I'm not going to change anything in the equation yet, but I'm going to set a value in there, 400. If I go up here, I can now change this. Instead of 100, I'm going to put A. So this time, obviously, it's going to be 400 there. It's going to use 400 instead of, obviously, the A there. And also, I'm going to put that. Now, you could also put maybe B there and have separate values. Perfectly reasonable as well. But if you want it to just go up all the same in both parts of the equation, then just use the A. And you can put A there and then tab off that. And now you can see the result becomes exactly like the designer showed at the start. One thing with the custom inputs, you've got Z there. You can give it a name. You can turn around and say, don't know, whatever, can't think of anything, increase. But if you go over here and then you use this, you notice you've got a little up and down. Click there. Unfortunately, it goes between 0 and 9 or 100. Up to 100. That's it. But you can always override that. You can always put 400 or 500 even, whatever, maybe 300. But as soon as you click that, it will always go down to the obviously lower value. What you can also do, you can save it to the presets. If you want to store it away, which is always useful because you might think, you know what, I can use that equation later. Simply go to presets. If you haven't got it before, if you haven't created something similar and it does check, you can go up here and you can right click, create preset. So click there, and now you can give it a name. Just increase, just call it whatever. Increase one. You can see I'm never very good with the naming conventions here. And of course you can put it to the same category or one of these other categories there. And I've got an Andrew one there. So I just put it to that and click create. I can still modify it. I can still change it. Again, it's not cast in stone. You can change it and tweak it. So you can go up here. Instead of using R, G, and B, you can actually just click G and B off. So only channel that's been used now is the red channel. You get this red effect here, which is perfectly reasonable. But what you can also do is you can copy this. Just simply copy it. And also you can now paste it. But you can click here, add equation, and just add three. Obviously for red, green, and blue. You can see that's that automatically works it out that that's what you're going to do. And you can simply paste that in again and it will end up exactly the same as before. So you can modify it in other ways. So instead of A, you could of course have another one, but you can simply go back. And for this example, I would just quickly go back and just put in a value. So 300 and maybe 
300 there and maybe go with 200 for the blue one and 200 there and tab off. Now you'll notice I've obviously got 300 there so let's just change that so it's different and you can now see you get this effect. Lovely, super colourful design. There's also an A at the end, you notice there. You can also use that. It's really useful for creating sort of breaks in the shape in a variety of different ways. So let's just go back to that now. So just remove R, remove G and B, and then simply go to the A, just, just does it all for automatically, it just ignores those other equations. Now. now you can see straight through that design. So if you've got a background, you've got something in the background, you will see that. Obviously at the moment you can just see the transparency through to the background there. And you can tweak this, you can modify the square count, you can also modify this value as well. And once you've done that, you can click apply. And there it is lovely design that you can then modify and combine. So you don't have to just have this and you can tweak it. So you've got this, you can move it around and filters, you can go for blurs, say Gaussian blur, just to blur it slightly, maybe like that. Maybe distort it. So filters, distort and deform. Simply add some pins here and you can quickly distort the design to create all kinds of unique, wonderful textured designs your backgrounds, very 60s sort of influence designs there. And just drag that out and click apply. Well, once you've got this, you can also, of course, go down here, just a layer, standard layer, so you can click effects. So click effects. So you might think, oh, I don't want black. I'm not happy with that. Simply so go to gradient overlay and you can just add maybe a gradient or maybe click there and go for color. Maybe change that to red as well as go for 3D and a 3D effect very quickly, as well as outer shadow. And of course you can duplicate this layer as well. Click close. So this layer can be duplicated, simply hold down the alter option key and drag. And then you can combine them and create a variety of different designs. Now that design that I've just created, you can also use it as a live effect. So what you do, simply select this again, or any other shape, it could be ellipse, any other image, it could be type even. Create that, then go to layer, and then you go down to new life filter layer, colors and procedural texture. Now you don't have to type it all in again. Good thing about presets, it does get carried over into the live effects as well. And you can go down here and you can go down the bottom and you can see my function there. And there's the equation. Now you'll notice one thing I didn't explain, Rx, what's that? Well, it does mean you can actually drag it. So if you decide, you know what, that's the best part of the image that sort of effect where it sort of goes up, you can move it across, or you can go the other way. And of course, you can still modify this equation. You might decide, you know what, instead of that, maybe a different, and there's loads. I would suggest check the help, Affinity Photos help. There's a load in the procedural texture talking about various functions here. So instead of that, you can always put OSC, and then maybe SIN, SIN there, and then you get this lovely blurring effect instead of that sharp, See very sharp design. And you can of course continue to modify this and create designs there. And now you've got blend modes as well. You can combine that as well. And once you've done that, you can close it. It's still live, so you can come back to it at any point. You can also modify the shape as well. That's a good thing about it. Go up here, convert to curves. So you can now tweak it and the design, that effect is still there with that shape. One thing you'll note when you actually move it around like this, you can see the actual effect. Unfortunately, you're just scanning over the effect. The effect doesn't move along with it. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. Now you can always, of course, go back, go to the procedural texture, double click, bring up the panel, and then you can manipulate it and move it around and reposition it in the way that you particularly want, and then close it again. And then, of course, work with it. Now, if you're very happy with it, you're fixed with that, what you can then do is simply just go up here, and you can always right click and go down to rasterize. So rasterize turns it all into a pixel layer and then you can't manipulate that design anymore. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.